So this is how I remember the lumbosacral plexus. Uh, just a wee diagram. I found a lot of the videos on YouTube had a whole lot of really long soulless lines. Uh, so I tried to come up with a bit of a fun way. Um, lots of short lines from T12 to S4 so I don't have the coxygeal plexus in there. Don't need long pretentious lines like the brachial plexus, just some short ones will do. And the way that I remember it is how many nerves each root contributes to. So the pattern goes like this. One from T12, three, four, and then from the bottom, one, three, four. And then in the middle goes three, four, three, four. Each of those numbers is how many nerves each root contributes to. So T12 goes to the subcostal nerve, which kind of makes sense, being below the costals. And S234, keep it off the floor, goes to the pudendal nerve. Uh, and the pelvic floor. So that's easy. Uh, and then comes in, I guess, a little story. So we'll call the threes uh, girls and the fours boys, kind of like laryngeal mask always, you know, the threes for generally small females and the fours, I guess, are for guys or girls, but in this circumstance, we're going to say they're boys. Uh, so L1 goes to three. It's easy enough. And L1 backwards is. IL, uh, so ilio hypogastric and ilio inguinal and then the genitive femoral. Uh, so L2 has four roots, and like I said, that's a guy, right? So he is the cool athletic guy at his school, still very likable, uh, which isn't always the case, but this guy is. So he gets a little bit of genitive femoral action from time to time and because he's very social he's got three more which we know he's got four contributions to nerves and because he's big and strong he's like the thigh big and muscular so all these have to do with the thigh so after the genitive femoral we've got a lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh the obturator is the adductor compartment of the thigh and the femoral nerve. L3, it's pretty hard living next to a good looking guy like L2 uh, and not falling madly in love, so we've got three roots from L3 and they all go hang out with L2 as far as the lateral cutaneous obturator and the femoral go. Uh, then L4 is a guy and being next to these two canoodling away gets a little jealous so he decides to crash a couple of their dates. And he's got four contributions, so after those two, he does two of his own. Uh, one goes to the lumbosacral trunk. And because he's crashed two dates, he's a bit of a big ass. So superior gluteal nerve. Um, L5's got three, so a girl again, and she's sitting next to L4. And it's sort of like, well, he's jealous. He's crashed two dates, but he's all right. I'll have a little pity on him. And hang out with them, the lumbosacral trunk and the superior gluteal um, but by association becomes a bit of a little ass the inferior gluteal alright then S1 is a guy again, it's got four um, and I guess likes asses, why not uh, so hangs out with these two and then does two of his own, sort of like L did. Um, one will end up combining with the lumbosacral trunk to become the sciatic which is a big awesome functional nerve and then a not big awesome functional nerve is the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh. doesn't do a whole lot exciting. So the lumbosacral plexus gets depressed and says that's it I'm done. Um, and then S2 and 3 are also like well what about them? Well they give off roots to the nearest ones, sorry, fibers to the nearest one, so S3's got three, one to the pudendal, and then the next two closest ones are the posterior cutaneous and to the sciatic, and then S2 does the same, one to the pudendal, one to the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh, one to the sciatic, and it's got one more, a ferro gluteal. When you look at it like that, the whole schema looks a little horrendous, but now once you can jot this quickly in an exam, 
and you want to know the roots that contribute to say the femoral nerve you can just have a look at it and be like oh, okay well that's L2, L3, L4 for instance. Um, so hope that helps.